Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India discuss about the second mode of corrosion that is uh, aqueous corrosion particularly that is galvanic corrosion. So, galvanic corrosion is a form of corrosion which usually occurs when two dissimilar metallic materials are electrically connected and they are placed in a in an aqueous media or electrolyte. So, usually the potential difference existing between the two dissimilar metals uh, is the driving force for the corrosion to occur. So, this is the case for copper and steel which are uh, which is actually soldered. So, you will see that there is extensive corrosion at the steel surface of this particular steel pipe steel part of the pipe pipeline combinations as compared to that of copper. This is because of the fact that steel is uh, basically uh, more prone to prone to corrosion or active as compared to that of copper. So, when two metals are actually joined together you will see that the steel basically goes on corroding as and as there is a flow of electron or evolution of electron that electron actually saves the copper to a large extent. So, like that you will find that steel goes on corroding and that corrosion proceeds from the junction point towards the other end of the particular pipeline. So, this galvanic corrosion can be a dangerous form of corrosion which basically starts at the interface and then proceeds to a large extent towards the other side of the component. And it is naturally a kind of localized form of corrosion and when it occurs in many cases not only in dissimilar combinations, but when the metal which is having dissimilar phases they are also depending on the that uh, corrosion probability or DMF of the individual phases you will find that corrosion uh, there may be a micro galvanic cell formation and as a result of which galvanic corrosion proceeds. So, usually metals and alloys uh, in you if you just talk about uh, general corrosion or atmospheric corrosion in normal environment they are basically standard EMF series plays very important role to choose the materials, but whenever you talk about the application of metals and alloys in quantitative uh, application of metals and alloys in normal environment actual environment there the series which is applied is galvanic series. So, that galvanic series is nothing, but it gives you information about the relative corrosion potential of that different metals in that different in, in the in metals as well as alloys in different environment. And uh, that galvanic series plays a very important role to choose the materials for uh, galvanic combination. So, basically you have to be careful to choose the materials for that uh, to prevent the galvanic corrosion you must choose the materials which are very close in the galvanic series for the gal for the prevention of galvanic corrosion. So, this is typical example of the galvanic series where uh, like different uh, steels as well 18 8 stainless steel which is passive and noble naturally and then nickel and then copper tin brass 18 8 again uh, it is MS aluminum zinc magnesium they are actually uh, they, are, they are sequentially arranged from the noble, noble end to the active end in marine water environment. So, as I mentioned you that the driving force for this galvanic corrosion is the potential difference the EMF difference of the two metal when they are they are joined together in aqueous environment. So, this is the case for the zinc and copper whenever you immerse it in typical hydrochloric acid solution you will find that and if you have connect them properly you will find that the zinc corrodes and as at the expense of copper. So, copper is actually protected, but zinc goes on corroding to a large extent. So, this is typical galvanic cell and you will find that uh, the galvanic cell formation usually occurs or galvanic corrosion usually is observed not only when you just uh, connect two dissimilar materials or two dissimilar metal. Uh, together, uh, but also it can occur by different other reasons as well. For example, if any as I mentioned you in any microstructure if you have different phases and different phases having different corrosion potential you will find that 
there will be micro galvanic cell, cell, micro -galvanic cell formation between two different phases and as a result of which problem starts at the interface and it proceeds thereafter. When there is difference in concentration of the metallic ion, then also the galvanic cell might form difference in concentration of the oxygen, there also there may be galvanic cell formation, difference in residual stress level. So, for example, in one case you just partially cooled over quantum metal and other part is actually uh, recrystallized or annealed, you will find that due to residual stress difference the cold work site is corroded to a large extent as compared to that of annealed site. Similarly, difference in temperature, if there is difference in temperature usually high temperature regime acts as a anode, anode as compared to that of low temperature regime as a result of which you will find that more corrosion attack is there in the high temperature regime. So, like the different examples are also shown here for example, different phases even of the same metal can form galvanic couple at the microstructure level like in steel cementite is noble as compared to ferrite. So, if you just take eutectoid steel of uh, plain carbon steel of eutectoid composition you will find that there will be due to galvanic cell formation and also because of the galvanic corrosion the ferrite part degrades or corroded to a large extent as compared to that of cementite part. So, it may, may be formed by because of the concentration difference of metal ion hmm. in an electrolyte you call it concentration cell where metal ion deficit part acts as anode and metal ion excess part acts as cathode. The, you can also form that microgalvanic cell when, when there is a oxygen deficit regime, regi, regime or oxygen enriched regime. For example, in case of previous corrosion you will find that the differential aeration cell formation is there because of oxygen concentration difference which basically is nothing but the kind of uh, galvanic attack. So, initiation starts because of the galvanic corrosion and then it proceeds thereafter to a large extent because, because of the autocatalytic reaction. Then galvanic shell may form because of difference in residual stress as I mentioned you the stress free region is more acts as anode as compared to that of stress free region. region and galvanic cell may form due to difference in temperature in the same metal like high temperature region. High temperature region is uh, more active usually acts as anode as compared to that of low temperature region. So, if you take a component having different temperature in different region you will find that different temperature region basically corrodes uh, to a large different extent. So, you have to be very much careful and in addition to that there is also the gal galvanic cell formation. So, as I mentioned you that uh, galvanic series actually plays a very important role and also acts as a guideline for choice of material for uh, galvanic coupling. So, whenever you have the necessity for application of two different materials or coupling of two different materials you just choose them which are more close in the galvanic series. Like for example, the case for copper nickel and silver, uh, silver solar for you uh, if you are interested to just couple copper with uh, copper nickel alloy that is very much acceptable, copper can be coupled with brass as well, then tin can be coupled with brass there will be less uh, very less uh, galvanic attack. But if you go on coupling steel with aluminum bronze or steel with nickel you will find that lot of galvanic attack will be there or lot of corrosion will be there because of the galvanic corrosion. Similarly, if you just choose zinc and if you just choose zinc and titanium or zinc and stainless steel you will find that there will be lot of galvanic attack. So, whenever you just go on choosing material combinations this galvanic series plays a very important role to and acts as a guideline for the choice of the materials combination for a specific purpose. Now, the factors which influence the galvanic behavior they are ample for example, the potential difference between metals and alloys. So, how they are basically placed in the galvanic series. Second part which is very important is that the kind of environment the component is exposed to because depending on the environment again the position of different metal or react chemical reactiveness of different metal changes. So, the environment which, uh, which is actually the service environment of the component couple that also plays a very important role. Polarization behavior of the metals and alloys, geometrical relationship of the component metal or alloys and naturally temperature differences, stress differences, microstructures these all factors play a very important role, play important roles actually to determine the 
galvanic corrosion behavior of the materials combinations. So, this is see there are few examples of the galvanic corrosion for example, this is the schematic showing uh, break in the mill scale can actually there is a breakage of the mill scale and because of that uh, naturally the fresh surface is exposed and one surface is actually the uh, it is still there uh, you will find the scale is still there you will find that there is galvanic cell formation and as a result of which the in the broken surface or exposed surface the rate of attack is more than that of the unbroken part where scale is remaining. Similarly, this is the case for galvanic corrosion of aluminum ceiling in buried telephone cable coupled to buried copper plates. So, we will find that at the particular uh, that aluminum say copper, say copper is highly stable as compared to that aluminum we will find that due to galvanic attack the aluminum is basically uh, destroyed to a large extent. So, current part in the electrolyte between two metals for example, if you have that anodic metal and then cathodic uh, metal. So, you will find that naturally the problem starts at the interface. So, the uh, that anodic side basically corrodes to a large extent and by that process it protects the surface of the cathodic metal. So, if you just go on measuring the like uh, potential of the anode and cathode you will find that E anode is co naturally quite less this is active in nature and E cathode is very high. So, you will find that from the interface the corrosion rate also changes. So, near to the interface the corrosion rate actually is quite large and as you go on proceeding towards the uh, anodic side naturally you will find that E corrosion is near to that of metal of that E corrosion of the anode. So, naturally you will see that uh, usually that uh, the interface plays a very important role and everything every problem starts from the interface. This is the galvanic corrosion of aluminum and copper coupling as I mentioned you again galvanic corrosion of painted steel body steel auto body. So, we will find that there is uh, by some way by erosion corrosion or by the uh, typically the exposure of this particular painted surface to environment if there is a breakage of the or if there is damage of the paint layer you will find that there will be galvanic attack uh, and this particular painting layer paint layer basically cannot uh, save the underlying metal because of the uh, cathodic protection because paint is usually noble in nature. So, you will see that underlying metal actually corrodes to a large extent and rate of corrosion of the underlying metal is much higher than that of exposed part normally which is not painted. Similarly, galvanic corrosion of steel pipe at brass fitting in humid marine environment you will find that where uh, underneath that of uh, kind of brass uh, this thing there is a lot of uh, corrosion in the steel and uh, naturally you will find that uh, this brass is nobler compared to that of steel. So, you will find that steel plate is or steel part is broke that damage to a large extent as compared to that of the part where there is no, uh, no connection actually or there is no coupling. This is the case for carbon steel stainless steel combinations it also depends on you will find that carbon steel that uh, this particular uh, galvanic corrosion current density is much higher than that of uh, stainless steel which is basically non corroding in nature and it also depends on the resistivity of the environment solution particularly. In water environment where resistivity is uh, quite uh, low here you will find that corrosion rate is uh, much higher uh, current density in, in terms of galvanic current density as compared to that of the case where resistivity is very high. So, resistivity of water naturally ionic conductivity plays a very important role, ionic conductivity of the electrolyte plays a very important role higher is the ionic conductivity naturally higher will be the rate of corrosion attack. So, this is again flow rate again the combinations for iron and copper. So, you will find that if you go on insulating the uh, part naturally you can minimize the tendency of the attack of the typical uh, anodic part of the combinations of the couple. The Kelpa this is the case for thermogalvanic corrosion where you find that hot part actually acts as anode as compared to that of cold part and problem starts at the interface. Now, if you quickly go through the way by which you can combat the galvanic corrosion. So, usually the uh, way or that uh, 
techniques normally applied for prevention of general corrosion, some of the techniques are also applied or can be applied for the prevention of galvanic corrosion. They are like cathodic protection, application of inhibitors in the environment, application of coatings. So, these are very standard way of protecting the surface for any kind of uh, corrosion, but apart from that you can also choose the proper material combinations which are very close to the galvanic series. You can apply insulation in between the dissimilar materials and also another very important way of uh, prevention of galvanic corrosion is by avoiding the unfavorable area effect. So, usually corrosion uh, whenever you talk about corrosion rate current density is very important. So, if you have a very large area of contact uh, of the anode as compared to that of cathode you will find that current density will be much uh, lower. So, naturally as a result of which you will find that degree of effectiveness or degree of, degree of corrosion will be reduced in the anode. So, if you have a very large area can and cannot to cathode ratio, you can reduce the probability or you can reduce the overall corrosion rate of the anode as compared to that of other way where you have very low uh, anode to cathode ratio, very small area anode to cathode area ratio. So, you have to avoid the unfavorable area effect actually. So, you have to whenever you have the uh, possibility of galvanic coupling, you choose the anode which is having much higher area than that of the cathode which is beneficial because it will reduce the current density and as a result of which corrosion rate of the anode. So, now third type of corrosion is the crevice corrosion. So, crevice corrosion is a kind of corrosion which occurs at the sealed areas that contain a small volume of the aqueous solution. So, usually when there is chloride in the environment it is basically aggravated, but it is not necessary to have the chloride in the environment. So, as I mentioned you that uh, that galvanic corrosion basically the crevice corrosion the process any processes or corrosion initiation mechanism is by galvanic attack because whenever there is a like sealed area you will find that in the inside the sealed area the air concentration is much higher than that of outside sealed area. So, as a result of which there is differential aeration cell formation and because of aeration differential aeration cell formation you will find that there will be galvanic attack at the interface between the high air region as well as low air, uh, low air concentration region. So, because of that again galvanic attack the corrosion starts and as soon as it starts you will find that in the crevice region where there is a electrolyte solution, but uh, air concentration is not enough you will find that there is no more the, the air the which is available is not adequate for the uh, passive layer formation and as a result of which you will find that corrosion rate of the inner layer is much higher and it go on proceeding to a large extent as compared to that of outer, outer layer, so particularly because of the differential aeration cell formation. And this particular case is further aggravated if there is chloride in the environment, because chloride they basically bleaches the oxide film not only that chloride, chloride actually increases the corrosion rate to a large extent. So, presence of chloride is not really is dangerous where crevice attack is the main form of corrosion uh, in engineering practice. So, you will find that this crevice corrosion is, uh, is observed in different not only in that sealed area, but also in any area where there is uh, for example, where you have washer and that is uh, loosely sealed actually. So, there also you will find that typical crevice corrosion problem is uh, existing. So, it occurs with bolted parts and threads when submerged in electrolyte, the crevice creates a small anode and the rem remainder of the sample it is it, being a large. So, here another problem is also there, not only the differential relation cell formation, but also the unfavorable area ratio is also existing, because in the crevice region the area is much lower than that of uh, the uh, outside region. So, because of the very low anode to cathode ratio you will find that or very small anode to cathode ratio the corrosion rate inside the crevice region is much higher than that of outer part. Hmm. So, you have to be very much careful and design the component combinations properly, so that you can uh, 
combat the possibility of the crevice attack. So, this is the example of crevice corrosion at a metal to metal crevice site formed between the components of type 304 stainless steel fashioner in sea water. Hmm. So, you find that lot of crevice uh, corrosion is there at the uh, in the fashioner. Again crevice corrosion at non metallic gasket site on an alloy 825 sea water heat exchanger. So, in the gasket pipe you will find that because of the presence of gasket usually that part is actually uh, their crevice corrosion creates lot of trouble and it damages the surface to a large extent. Then crevice related corrosion for different alloys in natural sea water again you will find that lot of corrosion is there at the crevice site as compared to that of our surrounding region. So, if you just quickly go through the different factors or parameters which influence the crevice attack of a component, these are amples for example, the type of crevice whether it is metal to metal combinations or non metal to metal combinations, the gap degree of tightness, then crevice depth, then exterior to interior surface area ratio. Because as I mentioned you that uh, these all factors play very important role because uh, uh, if you see carefully the factors, uh, you will find that like type of type of crevice, whether it is metal to metal or non metal to metal. So, if it is metal to metal, they are quite close to the this galvanic series. On the other hand, if it is non metal to metal, they are widely apart in the galvanic series. So, you will find that probability of crevice attack will be more when there is non metal to metal attack as compared to that of metal to metal attack. Again, crevice gap is very important because uh, lower is the gap smaller will be the electrolyte and uh, larger is the gap naturally higher will be the electrolyte in the crevice side. So, accordingly you will find that attack rate will also vary. Crevice depth is also very important. So, where you are it will, you will find that as you go on increasing with depth or if you go on changing depth you will find that attack, attack rate will be usually more actually because on the surface the attack rate is much lower because it is exposed to the environment. So, there is possibility of the lay oxide layer formation and as you go on decreasing as you go on proceeding towards the depth you will find that there will be more uh, less oxygen supply or the less air supply as a result of which you will find that there will be the more tendency for the crevice corrosion. Then exterior to interior surface area ratio it basically controls the uh, this is the basic principle of combating the galvanic corrosion, higher is the ratio of the uh, anode to cathode naturally lower will be the crevice attack, but lower is the anode to cathode ratio or smaller is the anode to cathode ratio higher will be the crevice attack. Then if you talk about environment then whether it is the uh, how much is the oxygen content in the environment, how much is the pH in the environment, then chloride level, temperature, agitation these all play very important role. Hmm. So, mass transport migrations whether you there is any kind of stirring action in the environment, diffusion and convection whether any flow is there flow, flow is whether lamellar flow or convective dominated flow. So, whether there is any biological influence sometimes uh, the micro biological species if they are in the environment they basically get accumulated on the surface and it acts as a site for the crevice uh, crevice corrosion initiation. So, as you if you do not clean it properly you will find that after a while there will be lot of crevice attack and you have to be very much careful to repair the part otherwise there will be severe damage of the component. If you talk about electrochemical reactions they are metal dissolution, oxygen reduction and hydrogen evolution. So, these are very important and also metallurgical phenomena or metallurgical parameters which are important they are nothing but the elements or maybe the uh, components that ingredients in the alloy, whether any impurities are there, whether there are different phases in the particular alloy, then what is the passive film characteristics, whether passive film, film is stable or non stable. For example, if you take the case for 304 stainless steel, you will find that it is more prone to crevice attack as compared to that of 316L stainless steel or 316 variety of stainless steel which contains a little bit of uh, which contains little bit of molybdenum. So, when molybdenum is there in the in that particular alloy you will find that that film is highly stable uh, as compared to that of chromium uh, chromic oxide film which basically protects the surface. 
So, when that molybdenum is there it forms a complex oxide which is stable in that particular previous environment or chloride containing environment which is more stable and basically it reduces the probability of crevice corrosion. So, one of the important form of crevice corrosion is filiform corrosion which usually is observed in the painted surface. So, what happens is that in the painted surface there is always very small small nano level perforations or uh, porosities micro to micro level porosities to nano level porosities. So, through the porosities there is always uh, that uh, water molecule absorption when, when the water molecule get absorbed on the surface there is iron oxide formation uh, ferric oxide and also ferric hydroxide formation and you will find that there is always concentration in the whenever if you talk if you see the uh, this particular formation probability or formation rate, rate in different regions you will find that it is higher at some region some of the part of the region it is not uniform rather because wherever there is perforation very small porosity is there through there only through that porous region only there is migration of the uh, water molecule and then there is formation of iron hydroxide. So, whenever there is hydroxide formation there actually there will be much more uh, moisture absorption. So, there is always a differential aeration cell formation and also the different phase formation like micro galvanic cell formation because hydrides are more stable as compared to that of iron which is there. So, as a result of which because of the galvanic cell formation and moisture absorption this particular uh, reaction proceeds from the uh, from one side to other. So, initially the attack starts at some region where there are uh, small perforations or uh, damage or porosity is on the paint surface, but uh, as soon as it forms the one end gets opened and through that end there is water molecule migration and then there is differential aeration cell formation and subsequently damage uh, subsequently corrosion of the other part of the metal and this particular thing proceeds uh, in a tubular fashion and you call it as filiform corrosion. So, when you look at the surface you will find that it basically the filiform for, for filiform corrosion basically uh, the appearance of the filiform form formation is li like uh, in a tubular fashion zigzag uh, zone on the surface. This usually is observed in aluminum, magnesium, iron these all surfaces who, whose hydroxides are very much prone to get uh, hydrated or uh, prone to absorb moisture and which is very much prone to form the which is very much prone which are very much prone to corrode in aqueous environment. So, another type of important corrosion is the pitting corrosion usually. So, that I will discuss in the next class, but before uh, the beginning of the next talk I must say that crevice corrosion, galvanic corrosion these are very important kind of corrosion uh, because they are basically localized in nature and whenever you talk about this kind of corrosion you have to be very much careful again to choose the proper material. If you talk about the prevention of the crevice attack then you have to be careful in cleaning the surface at a regular interval you have to just avoid the uh, avoid the condition so that uh, there is no crevice gap there is no crevice zone in the metal. So, you have to be very much careful to avoid sealing and also if you just flow the air properly or flow the water properly so that that region is properly protected then there is less probability of crevice attack. You can also get rid of the crevice corrosion by proper choice of material as I mentioned you the kind of film which forms on the surface if protects the surface to a large extent then it can minimize the tendency of the crevice attack. For example, the case of mild steel as well as stainless steel 304 stainless steel and 316 stainless steel. If you just compare these three cases uh, you will find that the minimum crevice attack will be there in 316 stainless steel as compared to that of that uh, mild steel or 304 stainless steel because there is stable oxide formation which is highly stable even though there is a differential aeration cell formation it basically does not get deteriorated even if there is chloride in the environment it does not that chloride cannot breach away the oxide layer which is forming on the surface. You can reduce the possibility of previous attack by reducing the temperature by reducing the chloride level in the environment by the application of 
inhibitors in the environment and also by cathodic protection. So, these are the different ways by which you can reduce the probability of the crevice corrosion and finally, you have to choose the proper material so that you, you can get rid of this kind of corrosion to a large extent. Thank you very much.